Hello everybody. I thought I'd give today's airtime to somebody who's more eloquent than I am to talk about books. And indeed, he's more eloquent about most things than I am. Carl Sagan. That's a name many of my generation will know well, but the younger folk probably won't, although they should. Carl Edward Sagan. He died in 1996. He was an American scientist, astronomer, cosmologist, astrophysicist and astrobiologist. He's best known for his research on the possibility of there being extraterrestrial beings, aliens. He was a full professor at Cornell University and he wrote hundreds of scientific papers and more than 20 books. And he co-wrote and narrated the award-winning TV television series Cosmos, A Personal Voyage. That was the most widely viewed series in history. Cosmos has been seen by at least 500 million people in 60 countries. Cosmos is also published as a book and I've linked that below in the text on Amazon and Goodreads. The list of his achievements is far too long for me to repeat here, so I've also linked his profile on Wikipedia. However, one thing does need to be mentioned. Sagan was the founder of the SETI Institute, whose letters stand for Search for Extraterrestrial Life. He's been an inspiration not just for popularising science, but for writers in science fiction. Books break the shackles of time, says Carl Sagan. The trick, he says, is knowing what books to read. Without more ado, here is Carl Sagan talking about books. What an astonishing thing a book is. It's a flat object made from a tree with flexible parts on which are imprinted lots of funny dark squiggles. But one glance at it and you're inside the mind of another person. Maybe somebody dead for thousands of years. Across the millennia, an author is speaking clearly and silently inside your head, directly to you. Writing is perhaps the greatest of human inventions binding together people who never knew each other, citizens of distant epochs. Books break the shackles of time. A book is proof that humans are capable of working magic. If information were passed on merely by word of mouth, how little we should know of our own past, how slow would be our progress. Everything would depend on what we had been told, on how accurate the account. Ancient learning might be revered, but in successive retellings, it would become muddled and then lost. Books permit us to voyage through time, to tap the wisdom of our ancestors. A library connects us with the insights and knowledge of the greatest minds and the best teachers drawn from the whole planet and from all our history to instruct us without tiring and to inspire us to make our own contributions to the collective knowledge of the human species. There's a fair number of Gutenberg Bibles and first folios of Shakespeare in the world, but most of the books you see in front of you are limited editions with very few surviving copies. But there also exists in the world mass printings of paper-bound books that I think are still more wonderful. For the price of a modest meal, you get the history of Rome. Books are like seeds. They can lie dormant for centuries, but they may also produce flowers in the most unpromising soil. These books are the repositories of the knowledge of our species and of our long evolutionary journey from genes to brains to books.
Libraries in ancient Egypt bore these words on their walls, nourishment for the soul. And that's still a pretty fair assessment of what libraries provide. If you enjoyed this episode, please give me a like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.